Hi, welcome to Southern New Jersey and Estuary Live. My name's Eric Sims, and I'm gonna be one of your hosts today. And the reason why I'm whispering is because we happen to have a baby with us here on the marsh today who's been getting ready for an on-camera appearance a little bit later on. So let's take a look and see what we have. Ah, hopefully we can zoom in there for a second. We'll actually get this guy out of here. This is a diamondback terrapin turtle. It's a hatchling. And the reason that we're talking about babies today is because we are focusing on estuaries as nurseries, as places where lots of animals like to come and find their mates and breed and raise their young. And it's a great environment to do that. There's something I want you to take a look at that I have in my hand right here. Okay, this orange piece of plastic. And this piece of plastic has a lot to do with the little guy that I just showed you on camera, that little terrapin turtle. So I'm gonna turn things over now to John Wenick. Uh, John is an instructor at the Marine Academy of Technology and Environmental Science in Toms River, New Jersey. And John and his students are involved with diamondback terrapins and uh, doing research on those. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, we're gonna talk about some turtles and probably answer that first question that you had about that little hatchling and that orange device, and that'll be answered right here. But we're gonna introduce the turtles right here. We have two diamondback terrapins right here. Our students are gonna tell us a little bit more. We have Kurtz Manf Mansfield, a student here at the Marine Academy program, and the other students will introduce themselves as we go along. But terrapins are native or endemic to this area, which means that they are in salt marshes. So this marsh is a very important habitat for the terrapins. Terrapins swim around, live in estuaries, and they're one of the only reptiles that are found in estuaries. And they have a top shell, like other turtles. We have a carapace, which is called the top shell. The bottom is called the plastron, and they have these little plates on here called scutes, and we can sometimes age terrapins by using those. Terrapins will feed in marsh systems, and they'll eat things like snails and crabs, and they'll live their whole entire life cycle right here in an estuary. So they'll do everything in an estuary. So we're going to tell you some facts about that and see if you have any questions. Hi, my name is Connor McBride. I'm part of the Mates Academy. And uh, we can differentiate between the two different types of male and female diamondback terrapins because the larger females grow about three to four times larger than the males. And also while they're growing, you know, it's hard to tell the differences in size. But the males have longer and skinnier tails while the females have shorter and stubbier tails. Well, hi, I'm Crystal Diaz. Um, well, things about terrapins are males and females are ranged very bigly in like different sizes. Um, females, you can always tell they're bigger because they need more room to lay the, to have the eggs and hold them in their bodies. Um, female terrapins become mature about seven years, and males become mature about three years. Uh, when females go to nest, they nest up on the bay banks and they lay eggs from four to uh, eighteen about eggs about in a nesting ditch about. 6 to 18 inches, and um, terrapins live to about 40 years old. So I'll hand it over to Michelle. Hi, my name is Michelle. I'm from the Marine Academy, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the hatchlings. As Crystal said, they get laid from 4 to 18 eggs in a little group called the clutch, and these are the hatchlings right here. When they're laid in their eggs, it's one of the most vulnerable stages in their lives because they can't defend anything for themselves, and their nests are up on the bay banks, and they're pretty much open. And their predators include crows, gulls, um, mainly crows and gulls, basically. And here's Stephanie to tell you a little bit more about the hatchlings. Uh, basically, the hatchlings hatch in an like, immediate period of time, ranging from two to three months. Um, some of them actually stay in the nest longer, which is called late excursion. And that just means that they'll stay in there throughout the winter. And this can be a good thing, and it can be a bad thing. Uh, the reason why it's good is because when they stay in there, they last throughout the winter and then they'll hatch in the spring. Normally they'll hatch around like the fallish area and they'll have more predators. When they hatch in the spring, they have less predators. The only unfortunate thing is during the winter months, they, they have a chance of freezing. Um, depending on what kind of soil they're put into in a nest, the soil actually holds water and may freeze and kill the eggs. Hi, I'm Amy Morasco. Um, a lot of threats to terrapins are actually caused by humans. Um, loss of habitat is a big problem 
and um, also boat traffic can severely injure or kill terrapins. Um, this one here was actually hit by a rope propeller, which killed it. Um, also, in marsh systems that have roads running through them, females coming up to nests can be crushed by cars. And also, another big problem is commercial crab traps, where terrapins get caught in and drown, which Matt will tell you about. Hi, my name is Matt Wellington, and this is a overnight crab trap. And the little orange thing that we talked about before is a turtle excluder device. Thanks for all the, the answers, but uh, none of you guys got them. But it keeps the larger female turtles from going in, as you can see, Kurt will show you. They won't go in, but the little ones can still get in there. So we have to make sure that the little turtles don't get in and get caught.